everyone, welcome to Motorcycle Myths, the mini-series where I tackle a common myth or misconception about motorcycles, and I discuss whether or not it's true. Today's episode, we are going to be tackling the myth that sport bikes run hot. Now, I honestly can't tell you how many times I've heard people say this, like... I'll park in a parking lot or something, some dude will walk by and be like, oh, you're at a crotch rocket, I can't ride those things, they get way too hot. Like, I've heard so many people say that, and I kind of want to bring a little bit of light to this and why people would think that's the case. Now, before we get too far into this, I, I actually kind of have to eat my own words, and I'm, I'm going to be completely transparent with you guys on that. Because in one of my older videos, I did personally say that motorcycles run hot, or that sport bikes run hot. You know, you have the bigger engine is heat. If you are in a city that has a lot of traffic, your bike is going to get very hot. On a hot day, this thing will get up to about 220, 225 degrees, and the fans are kicking on pretty frequently. But that's just a natural thing for 600s. They run hot. Now, I don't want this to seem like I'm going back on my word or that, you know, I'm contradicting myself or that I'm taking that back simply for the fact of making that video because... You know, it, it's not uncommon for a sport bike to get up to 220 degrees. And at face value, is that hot? Yeah, it's hot. But is that actually bad? Is that a temperature that it's not supposed to get to? Is that overheating? And those are kind of the things that I'm going to be discussing here. The times that you will see your bike get up to those temperatures is times where, you know, let's say it's 95 degrees outside and you're sitting in bumper to bumper traffic, you know, you're barely moving along. That is when you are going to see 220, 225 degrees. You know, if you're sitting still for long periods of time and you're not moving around, and she just ran a stop sign, those are going to be the times that you're going to see that temperature. You know, if, you're, if your bike is anything like mine and you have an actual, like, temperature readout, as opposed to just, like, a gauge where you just have, like, the bars, you know, yeah, you're, you're going to see kind of some higher temperatures in a situation like that. Now, if you're like me, right now it's like a 75 degree day. I've been riding on the highway, you know, 65 miles an hour. I'm sitting at 166 right now, and chances are it's going to stay quite, a, you know, right around there. Yeah, it may get up to, you know, 170, 175, but, you know, overall, I've noticed if I'm on the highway like this, my bike usually sits, you know, somewhere between 170, 180. But real quick, I don't want to take up too much time with this. I kind of want to give you guys just a small little crash course on how the cooling system of your bike works and why it would get up to 220 degrees, like people would have an issue with. So basically, every engine in existence has some sort of a cooling system, and there are two common types of it. You have air-cooled engines and liquid-cooled engines. Now, air-cooled engines are going to be like your Harley Davidsons. It's going to be the types of engines where if you look at them, you see the sharp-looking fin-type things on the side of it. And basically how those work is those fins increase the overall surface area of the engine so that when air passes over it, it's, e it's able to pull heat out of your engine. You know, it's pretty understandable if you have, you know, let's say a 185 degree engine and you have 70 degree air flowing over that, that 70 degree air is going to pull the heat out of that 185 degree engine. And that's basically just how air cooled engines work. They just use air to cool them. And then you have liquid cooled engines, which is what about 90% of engines on the road are going to be. And that is what my bike is. It is a liquid cooled engine. Now how liquid cooling works is you have this stuff called coolant, or you may hear people call it antifreeze. Your coolant is a liquid that is inside the engine and it circulates through a thing that's called a water pump. It's basically just this little pump that just sits there and it, it circulates the coolant. Coolant flows through your engine and when it reaches the end of its path, it's got a thing called a thermostat. Okay, why are you slowing all the way down? Can you fucking go? 
what are you doing? So anyway, once it reaches, we'll, we'll say the end of its path, it's got a thing called a thermostat. And I'll put up a picture of what a thermostat looks like. And basically what it is, it is a temperature sensitive valve. Now every thermostat has a set temperature. And what that is, is it's the temperature that it is required to reach before it starts to open. So if you have a 185 degree thermostat, that valve is going to sit closed until it reaches 185 degrees. Once it reaches 185 degrees, it'll open a small amount. Let's say it reaches 195 degrees, it's gonna open a little bit more. 200 degrees, it's going to open even more. So it's not just an on-off sort of thing. It, it varies to allow whatever amount of coolant that it thinks it needs to pass through your radiator. So if you have a thermostat that's closed, your coolant is just going to sit there and it is going to recirculate through the engine. It's not going to go anywhere else. It's just going to stay in the engine and continue to circulate until it reaches whatever temperature the thermostat requires. So now let's say your coolant reaches 185 degrees, which is what your thermostat is set at. Once your thermostat opens, it's going to allow a little bit of coolant to flow through your radiator. All the rest of it is going to flow back through the engine. Once it goes into the radiator, it, the radiator is going to be that little honeycomb looking thing that sits either at the front of your car or the front of your bike. I'll put up a picture of one of those too. And that is where you're in, that's where your coolant cools back down. So you have, let's say, 185 degree coolant going into the radiator. It might be 150 degrees once it leaves the radiator. So now you have cool coolant coming back into the engine where it's able to absorb more heat. So basically your cooling system is just that. Your coolant goes into the engine, it pulls heat out of the engine, it leaves the engine, goes into the radiator where it cools back down, and then it goes back into the engine. And all your thermostat does is it controls where the coolant goes, if it stays in the engine or if it goes to the radiator, cool back down. So that is how liquid cooling works. So now, here is the problem with liquid cooling and why people will say your engine gets hot. Similarly to air cooling, you need airflow to still keep your engine cool. So if you have a bunch of hot coolant that your thermostat decides, oh hey, we need to cool this coolant back down and it sends it through the radiator. If you don't have airflow over the radiator, that coolant isn't going to cool back down. Now your motorcycle, your car understands this, which is why you have cooling fans. Thing is though, your cooling fans will kick on at a certain temperature which is going to be vastly higher than what your thermostat opens at. Now I actually did a little bit of research on this. Basically in every single vehicle, every single motorcycle within you know a slight variation about 220 degrees is the temperature that those cooling fans kick on. It doesn't matter if you drive a Suzuki GSX-R or a Toyota Camry. Usually around 220 degrees is going to be when your cooling fans kick on. Does that mean that your engine is overheating? No, not one bit. Those cooling fans are just there for situations where yes, you are in stop and go traffic, you're parked, and you're not getting that airflow over the radiator. So if your cooling fans are kicking on a lot, it is not a bad thing. It does, it's not bad for the bike. And understandably, you know, those cooling fans wouldn't be turning on at 220 degrees if it was bad for your engine. So in essence, your Toyota Camry, Chevy Impala, Chrysler Town & Country, you know, whatever, like whatever car is on the road, it's running the same way that a motorcycle is that is also liquid cooled. So you know this, you know, well I think we got what a Chevy Traverse up ahead of me. I about guarantee you right now he is also sitting at probably 170, 70, 177 degrees, which is what my bike is at right now. Because in essence they have the same cooling system. Only difference is the fact that I have all of it right in between my legs. So if I am sitting in stop and go traffic and my bike is at you know, 225 degrees and that, you know, Chevy Traverse is doing the same exact thing as me, chances are he's also at 225 degrees. It's all just kind of a matter of perspective, I feel like. Cause you know, like I said, I have the engine and the radiator and all that coolant right between my legs. I'm going to feel it. 
versus somebody in a car is not. Now, if you also want to, you know, argue the fact, oh, my Harley doesn't get hot or whatever, yeah, it does. Your, your Harley is going to be getting to the same temperature, and keep in mind, it's also using the air around you to cool it down. The only thing is, if you have a lot of airflow over that engine, there's nothing to keep your engine warm, which is actually bad for your engine. You want your engine to get up to a certain operating temperature because that's where your oil is going to have the best lubricity. That's where your engine is going to get peak performance. Believe it or not, you actually you do want your engine to get hot, which is why, as I said, your thermostat is going to circulate hot coolant if it determines that it doesn't need cool down. And I also do just kind of want to mention, if your sport bike is actually overheating, dude, you have problems. You're, your sport bike should not be getting up to absolutely ridiculous temperatures. You know, somewhere between 220, 230 degrees, like it's not bad for the engine, but yeah, like, at face value, it's hot, but it's not an uncommon temperature. So to wrap up the video, do sport bikes get hot? Really, I'm going to say no. Because I think people, like I said, they have the stigma that it's not supposed to do what it does. And that is not the case. If your cooling system is in full working order, your bike is doing what it wants to do. It is running the way it is designed to run. It's just the fact that you feel the heat a little bit more than you would in a different type of a vehicle. You know, a car. This Toyota Camry in front of me, it's gonna operate pretty much the exact same way that my bike does. It has a radiator, it has a thermostat, it has coolant, and its cooling fan is going to kick on somewhere around the same temperature that my bike does. You know, there's obviously every manufacturer is going to have, you know, a small window, you know, let's say plus or minus five degrees. But if your cooling system is in top working order, your bike is not getting hot, it's not a bad thing. But like I said, if you take it at face value, 225 degrees, yeah, it's hot, but it's not bad. But guys, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you can see more motorcycle myths in the future. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you later.